to live stream number 188. Clock is ticking up there. I am a little early, so if you're watching the recording, I definitely will not blame you for fast forward. Just a couple of minutes, uh, then we will get we will get into things. We should be live on YouTube. Looks like Isaac is here, so we are there. And uh, if we do a quick uh, refresh on the on the Facebook, uh, you should find me there too. If you um, if you are looking for me on Facebook at Mr. Lars Christensen, that's where you'll find me there. Yep, we are live both places. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Today's topic is wood carving into Fusion 360. Uh, so I was planning on doing a best question and answers today, but somebody sent me an email uh, that got me kind of like thinking about this. And again, my email address is down in the description area. Let me just make sure we got some lighting here. Uh, my email is down in the description area. You can absolutely email me. I'm not good at responding to my emails. Um, I'm trying to be better at responding on YouTube comments and Facebook comments, um, but I read them all. So, um, so this was kind of like what triggered what triggered this. I did think though, as we have people trickling here, I can see we got Bernie, Stefan from Sweden, uh, MNL from Germany. Absolutely appreciate you guys taking the time. I did think I want to answer two questions that I get quite a bit. Number one is about licensing. Um, with Fusion 360, there is, I guess there's four types of licenses, I think. There is the educational license. Then there is uh, the startup license. Those two um, are free. Those two are the ultimate version of Fusion 360. So um, if you're looking at what I'm doing inside of Fusion 360, besides that one button with a G on it, um, what is generative design, uh, you have the top line if you are a student or a startup. Then there's two uh, paid versions. There is the standard version, $310, and then there is uh, the ultimate version, what is, I think, $1,500. But be aware if you have the startup or you have the... The, the student license, you're not missing something. Uh, you have the ultimate license. As we're taking down here, I'm gonna save the second one for, for another day. Uh, let's get in and talk about uh, wood carving, uh, get wood carvings into to Fusion 360. So let me just uh, get rid of the clock and let's get going. Okay, got a bunch of people, good to go. Hello everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to join today's live stream. It is number 188, it is July 18th, 2018. Absolutely appreciate that you're here. If you're in the live stream, either on Facebook or on YouTube, thank you so much, really appreciate it. And of course also if you're watching the recording because someplace it's, it's very late or very early uh, in the day. Um, what we're going to talk about today is um, these types of wood carvings. So here is one. Looks uh, kind of uh, looks kind of fancy. Here is another one. Uh, looks kind of also kind of fancy. <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about how you can get those and uh, how you can work with them inside of uh, of Fusion 360. If um, you look at uh, this one and you think that it's actually not as uh, shiny as this one, that is because this is a solid where this is actually still a hollow shell. But I'm going to get back to that just in a second uh, because there's a funny story about this. So you've seen the, the two. We're going to work mostly with this one today, I think. Um, so... Let's get out of this. I'm just going to exit out of all this so we get the blank uh, screen inside of Fusion because I like, I don't like to cook too much stuff inside of these live streams um, and have, it's not a cooking show where you pull something out of the oven. We need to, to start somewhat with a, with a, with a free slate. Um, but what I did though was I went to Google uh, and I searched 3D carvings download 
that gave me that gave me two different uh, models. The first one called carving 3D models. Now you can use whatever you want. Um, this one here um, cost it cost money to get these files, um, and you will recognize this one here because I actually paid ten dollars to get one of them. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later on. But I also searched one that has three free. 3D carvings, and you can notice um, this one here was that other model uh, you looked at. So you can absolutely download uh, these uh, different ones, and then you can you can use them inside of Fusion. In the end, I'm going to show you, of course, also how you can create your own. But let's start with the easy one, and actually, let's start with the with the let's start with uh, with the free one because everybody likes free so you click on this and you get to download it when you download it uh, it came down as a zip file and uh, if you watch yesterday's live stream you will know that when it comes to unzipping extracting I might have certain things to learn about Windows that's okay um, I'll watch a YouTube video on that so I'll find somebody that can teach me about that but what I ended up with was a folder and I actually had to download uh, in this case WinRAR to make it work um, well, it was a little annoying, but whatever. Um, in the free model, this model you see over here, I um, extracted two files, an STL file and an OBJ file. Um, so let's get into Fusion. Um, open up our data panel here. Let me get out to my live stream um, archive here and let's load those files in. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit upload and select and uh, let me just make sure we get the right ones here these two um, STL and OBJ file open those up and click upload it's going to just take uh, two seconds uh, to bring these into uh, into to fusion three two one and actually, if I was going to insert them into, uh, if I was going to insert these into f to another file, I should probably now was complete. I should probably actually, I should now when I'm looking back at, it, I should probably use the insert and insert mesh. Uh, that would probably have been actually uh, another way to do it, and then save it. Uh, that has a size issue, but uh, enough of this. Uh, so you get two different ones. You get a, um, you get an STL file. You get an OBJ. Now I'm gonna open both up. So let's double click on the OBJ file first. It opens up there. Let me open up uh, the STL file. Okay. Now if you're wondering why my files are looking, I don't have like lines in them, it's because I turned that off to be more impressive before. Um, in Down on the TV monitor, visual style. Normally you will see I'm using shaded with visible edges right now it looks more like what you normally see with an stl file and here is we do the same thing for the obj actually when i normally made when i many times go in and change this if i don't feel like rendering it because this is not how the file will look in real world it would look like shaded so um that is just a little tip there but one thing i wanted to print quickly bring to your attention notice a difference between these two files if you look at this one besides the color uh, i give you a hint um, this here is a quad mess meaning four points where an stl file is a what is that a quad 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 three right this is rectangular man it's not my language uh it's triangles see this is triangles and this is actually uh not triangles but squares or rectangles uh quad um that is what an obj an obj is normally something uh preferred um in here if you're bringing this in now when you bring it in if we click on the the drop down here you will see that it comes in as a mess again remember this is the free version uh, that I brought in it is a, a it's still a mesh file so OBJ or STL we have talked about it before from a 3d printing but it could actually also be from a scanning uh, environment that you did you seen this but let me show you something cool I'm in the sculpt environment let me just get rid of the data panel I'm in the sculpt uh, workspace here 
if I right click on this, um, it will give me an option to convert it. And what it will let me convert is it will let me convert a quart mass, that's the, the rectangular mass style, into T-spline, into a new body. I right clicked here, let me just do that again. I right clicked and say convert. That's a T-spline kind of command. From a quart to a T-spline. Hit OK. Give Fusion just a second. And you will see that now it turned off our original mess but gave us this here. And this is a sculpt body per se. What means that if I select on a point here, right click and do edit form, I can completely work now with this as a uh, as, as, as sculpt environment. We've talked about this uh, before inside of Fusion many times. Um, now, if it is, well, if it is now in T-spline, that means it can also become um, a, a solid, right? That's kind of what you're used to. So if I go in here and I select all these, hold down Shift, select all these, I right click again, and I say convert again, now it will do from a T-spline to what is called B-wrap. What means it will do it into a new body, but it's a solid, right? Hit OK. Well, kind of, kind of right, but wrong. Uh, because what you will see we now ended up with is surfaces. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought that that T-spline became a solid. Well, notice this. See this back, the back of this? It is, it's like, almost like different kind of shapes. Um, it wasn't flat on the back. Like if we go back and look at, same thing with the STL file. Um, this was just a, a shell, but that's okay. Um, I'm okay with that. I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve to work with this and turn it into a solid if that is what I want. Uh, and that is what I want. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do is, um, well, if I'm done with the sculpt workspace, now it's it's actually a patch in here. So I'm gonna go and say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a boundary that's gonna make this an enclosed body. So I'm gonna select a sketch on this back face, and I'm actually just gonna do a two-point rectangle Boom, like this, and then I'm gonna make that a patch, okay? So I just added another patch. See that, I kinda like encapsulated it. Now, with this, I'm happy. I'm gonna go and hit the Create button, and I'm gonna select this Boundary Fill. We've used that one before. Boundary Fill, I'm just gonna highlight the whole thing and then I'll see that I get all these different cells. Though I notice one thing, and that is everything is green except this, see this area right here? This is, um, this is gray. And that tells me that something is up. Let me just cancel out of this for a second. It, everything looks pretty good, but I think I might wanna go in and investigate just a little bit. So I'm gonna uncheck, unlight bulb, the, the patch area I just created. And uh, then maybe I also get rid of this ring here, hide that for a second. Um, and then this ear, ooh, and then I start seeing something. Let me find the other ear. Oh yeah, look at this. There's a gap between these. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this, of course, I'm going to show you how to fix this. <laughs> but this is extremely important to remember. I said it before. Good things in, good things out. Or as negative people like to say, garbage in, garbage out. This was imported from this website that I have absolutely no control over. Uh, so when you bring something in, um, you, will, you might run into issues. And I'm going to show you that later again. Actually, with the one I paid for. See, remember, this was free. Um, but <laughs> we'll get to that. So, wait a minute. There's a gap here. But I can probably fix this somewhat easily. I am going to go into the Create. And I'm going to select a Loft right here. 
And then I'm going to select the first two edges. So this edge and this edge on this part. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to select around the edge on the other side. Let's make sure I select the right edge. Now there's more section to the other side here. That is okay. And now you will see that it kind of creates a loft between them um, in here. That's what I want. So I'm going to hit OK to that. So now I actually just added another loft. So with that, let's try to go back and see if I just fixed it by attaching these two to each other with an extra loft. So go back and turn them all on. Create. Boundary fill. Let's just select everything. And now you will see that everything turns green in there, but means that that is perfect. Now, if you watch my other live streams, um, oh, make sure we select everything. Um, if you watch my other live streams, you know that you then hit click cells, and then you go in and check whatever you want. Uh, but I'm lazy. Did you know you can actually select cells? You can actually just window, and it checks them all. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and hit OK here. And when I hit OK, now body 13 is actually a solid body. That's what we can see in that little white one there. So let's go in and uncheck these. Now, I'm, you could in theory delete these now, but this is actually how we got here. This is now a complete solid body. Uh, and you can see that because we got one body. Um, and if we went in here, we did something like a... Um, sexual analysis, so it's some kind of an origin on here. Uh, you will see that that is completely solid uh, all the way through. And this was actually the first model I showed you. Now, what I did was I right clicked, went into appearances, went into to the wood finished, and uh, select one of these and drag on a pine or maybe an oak. Uh, and then, like I showed you, just to get to, to the end here, um, that I turned shaded on so it looks more real. That gets rid of those lines. Um, well, those lines are called visible edges. So this just shows you all the edges, but in real life you wouldn't see those. But here is that solid model that I was kind of like after. And I brought in a, a solid model using the OBJ. Now, you also saw that I brought in the STL file. Um, and, um, and I wanted to show you that one because, well, somebody's going to email me. Again, my email address is down in, uh, in the description area. I know somebody's going to email me and say, well, I only had an STL file. I didn't have an OBJ file. Um, think about a, a cool website like Thingiverse, uh, for example. Uh, but again, um, and you know, some of you guys, 3D printing guys, you don't like when I say this. Good things in, good things out. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't like STL files is for the fact that up till this point, I have had no control over uh, this triangular, this triangular shape here, um, right? Like how big these triangulars are. So you're kind of somewhat in at the mercy of, of the accuracy of an STL file. However, um, one other trick I want to show you, though, is that if you go to your name, you go to Preferences, you go to Preview, you can turn on the Mess Workspace um, like this, and then you get a Mess Workspace. For some reason on my Mac, and I'm not sure if this is a Mac thing, you don't get this, but what you get is if you right click and you click edit uh, on, I don't have the icon here, but edit, uh, then the mesh toolbar will show up. So, but in the mesh toolbox here, um, and, and this is really, to me, this is one of the reasons that I love Fusion because I used to use I've used other CAD systems like Inventor and SolidWorks and there whenever we got an STL file we were like can't do anything with it kind of sucks sorry um, but we have these mess tools in here one of the things that's really neat about this is that there is a closed mesh so if I click on that and I select our mesh file 
um, it will actually uh, try to to make it a closed mass. If I hit the preview button, uh, you will see that it will close up with the button. Um, one of the things you need to be aware of here, though, is that when you do that, you are modifying the density of the mess. See, if I just do an undo, um, hopefully you can see this, the triangular shape here. But when I hit the preview, uh, see how it actually updates here. Now, you might have a tendency to say, give it the most accurate it can be. Um, but but realize that it's it's not... It's not going to become more accurate than when you br what you brought in. It's just going to take those triangles. It's going to break it down even even further. And uh, Fusion has a limit uh, on how many triangles you can convert into a solid. Um, somewhere in the help file it says don't go over 10,000 triangles. I have a pretty good lock around 50, a little bit under 50. Um, but I'm going to make this a little bit lower here. I'm going to bring it down to about 120. And what I'm looking for is somewhat a unified, if anything, um, shape here. Let's try 120 and hit uh, OK. Um, now, it did modify the model, right? Um, if you're looking at our converted solid, there are actually some, some clearances between the ring and this curve where now on the SCL file, you can clearly see that it kind of patched it up. But if you do this, we and we have a, a, a closed solid mess, not a closed solid, a closed STL file, we can go into model workspace and we can try to right click and say mess to B wrap. Select our, our STL file, hit OK. Now this one is telling me that I'm just on the edge here. 50,000. 50,486 conversion has been aborted. Uh, so if you make it over 50,000, you don't get a chance, but it's okay. Uh, if we go back into the mess workspace, there is a reduce function in here. And um, I'm actually just gonna change my selection to a window. And I'm just gonna select the whole model. And instead of doing dent density in here, you can actually change it over to face count. So now it gives you a face count. And now we can show it here like on full. It will be what we just saw. But now we can bring it down. So let's bring it down to like 35, 36,000 or so. Uh, that should be a little bit better. Hit OK. And uh, let Fusion uh, kind of do its thing here. OK, so now it's been converted down. Let's go back into uh, our model workspace and let's try again. Right click, mess to B wrap, hit OK. And now it realizes that we are down to 36. And it says that we are still high on the numbers of triangles. But do we want to proceed? Let's say yes. And if it is a watertight mesh, then, and now Fusion is thinking hard about it, then it does become a, a body, just like this. Uh, we can turn the light bulb off. I'm still thinking about it. Turn the light bulb off here. Let's just let Fusion just think about it for a second. <laughs> okay. And now it is a uh, now it is a solid body. However, you're looking at this right now, and you're like, ooh, this is very tessellated or whatever you want to call it. Yes, and that is. Uh, because we converted a mesh directly into to a, a solid. Now, if I go back and I turn off my visual style to shade it, it starts to look a little bit better, but you will see that it's still pretty bad in here. But this is a solid, which means we can start cutting, we can start working with it. Uh, what is neat about this model, the first model that I brought over, is that even though that let me get the visual this was where we started out if i had converted this to b rep before i brought it into t splines then that would actually also look more in this regard here but because i converted it into the t splines first the purple ones 
then uh, T spine will keep a constant um, curvature, and that is one of the reasons that that is a better step uh, down here. Okay, so this was all the stuff I wanted to show you with uh, with the with the free version from I found on the Turbo Squid. Uh, downloaded the free version here um, is that I brought it in as a solid OBJ first converting to T-spline then I had to to create the bottom on it pad some things together but this is a good good model uh, right here I'm definitely uh, happy with this one um, and then of course if you have an STL file then um, then you can get it into to something that looks like this and, and I know that I could have tried to go closer to the 50,000 and the 36,000. Let's just change the appearance to this and just see how how this looks. Now it is a solid. So yes, this looks maybe a little bit more carved out of, of, of something, but it's still solid. It's still okay. Uh, you could go in and work with, with these areas in here. Now, I showed you the free version first because um, then I thought, all right, uh, that is all cool. Um, but uh, there was also a, um, a a paid version, right? And I thought, you know what? Uh, this model here looks pretty dang cool. Um, it is $10. Um, I, that is definitely worth for me to kind of show that. And here comes the funny part. Uh, this time, let me actually bring it in through the insert mesh. It's not gonna change uh, anything. Uh, let's bring in the OBJ here. So here is the model that you you saw in the beginning. Uh, so this is the paid version. Now you will see that the paid version as an OBJ is, is the same as my free version was that it's kind of like uh, don't have a back, but that's okay. I'm thinking, all right, I'll just work with it the same way I work with my free version. What means that in um, kind of um, the, the patch environment in here, uh, we can go in, right click in here, and here we get the edit function in here. Um, so this is one way we can, this is what I wanted to show you with, with the Mac. Actually, I want it inside of the sculpt environment. I'm just gonna go and open up the one I had before. Here, same thing. Uh, so what I did before was I went in here and I said, all right, right click, let me convert it from a, a OBJ to the T-spline. Hit OK. Let Fusion do their thing. And again, this looks absolutely, absolutely awesome. Uh, but when I started converting this, I said, all right. So you saw before I selected them all. And now where they are T-splines, convert them into uh, B-Rap. In this case, it's gonna be surfaces. You will actually see that it, uh, it actually failed on a few of them. You're like, well, wait a minute, this is the paid version. And why did, why did it fail? So you can see that these are failed. So let me just hide all the other ones so we can take a look at them. This one here, you're like, wait a minute, why did this one fail on me? right click convert let me just do it one more time it actually gives you an arrow message and says edges of faces may be crossing and i could actually see on the model here that there was a portion that was red and i'm like "Ooh, see what happens here this is crossing over um this is crossing over and i thought oh well let me just try to delete this so i selected this face hit delete what well, does open up the T-spline, but I'm thinking maybe I can fix this later. And then I right click again and say convert T-spline. And then it says T-spline service X in a sec. That was when I realized what I'm kind of like in for here. And what I'm in for here is that these T-spline are crossing each other and, and these lines are crossing each other. And that means that even though that this is the paid version, um, it goes back to, uh, to to my comment before about garbage in, garbage out, right? 
that even though that I paid ten dollars for this for this file, um, that there is something going on here where I'm actually gonna have to go in and and do some repairs. And as I've said before, I do have limited time for preparing for these live streams. Yes, you could absolutely go in and start working, and we could probably get. Uh, I well, I don't probably. I could get this file fixed up and and be good, uh, but it will take to go in and start working. Uh, with these things um, so to wrap this up so again this was my my paid version um, there was our free version then I thought at the end somebody's gonna say okay Lars this was all great thank you hopefully thank you maybe not thank you but thumbs up if you like this thumbs down if you don't <laughs> uh, but somebody can say well what if I wanted to create my own and I thought I wanted to show you that in the last two minutes. So I'm going to open up the last file. And then what I did was I looked around my house um, and I could only find one place in my house where I had something that is similar to this. And that is uh, on the baby's crib. So I snapped a picture with my cell phone. And uh, what if you wanted to make your own? So what I will do, and I'm going to do this fairly quick. Uh, but we have live streams on sculpting. But what you could do was say insert a uh, an image, select the face, select that image. That's gonna come into uh, into fusion here. Bring that in something like that there. So there's the image that I just took with my cell phone. Now you know me. I would probably go in here, right click. So I would calibrate this image. So I don't know how long there is from here to here, but uh, let's just say that there is 300 millimeters. So now it gets a little bit, a uh, little bit bigger. And then what I honestly probably would do was I would break these down into different sections. Now you could start sculpting uh, right on here, but I would actually probably prefer to uh, create a little bit of help. So I would probably go in and create a spline and if we just concentrate on the midpoint here, uh, let's create a spline that goes from here to here to here. This definitely looked like this. I can't believe if this is hand carved though. This gotta be done by a machine somewhere. But I will create a spline, looks somewhat like this. Um, and you know how we have talked about splines. We could go in here, we could modify it, we could tweak it. So it kind of looked nice. And then what I would do was I would not try to fully define it. I would probably just right click and say fix. Uh, now with that, I didn't fix it because it's blue. Right click. Is it fixed? Definitely not fixed. Right click. Oh, I got out of the sketch, that's why. Edit sketch. Right click. Fix. Now it's green. <laughs> and then I would go in and I would say I want to create a T-spline form. So now we're in T-spline. That's where we were in with the other one. And I'm a big fan of these already pre-made options. So I would probably select a sphere here. And uh, select the face and just draw a ball. Make it a little bit bigger. So now we have a uh, kind of a ball like this. And then one of the best advice I've ever gotten was now you can just kind of like start deleting things of you don't want. So let's delete this side off. Let's delete, um, let's delete these sides here. I don't want to get rid of the spline, just these faces. Boom, boom, delete that off uh, there. Uh, another trick you sometimes see me use is symmetry. So like two, so now one side's gonna do what the other side does. Now you could right click, edit form, and now I'm in an area we have done live streams on before. If you ever search, um, maybe I'll select the whole line. Um, if you ever search something like this, you could drag that out to about there. 
um, now we are in the in the spot where we have definitely done live streams on this before on the sculpting environment but in this case here we could uh, we could kind of start playing with uh, with the shape here maybe insert another etch boom boom like that there right click edit form and uh, I don't want to take too much longer on this but I think you can kind of start seeing I do get a little wedge up here but I'm kind of start creating half of that standoff there and uh, and then in the end if we finish this yeah it does collapse on itself up here repair it nope you gotta be careful that you don't collapse we collapse this one up here am I over I'm over time now insert edge boom 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 I just wanted to get that edge there something and that is showing something and we would have to uh, to kind of close this up but what I would do to this point oh, why does it keep on collapsing on me it doesn't like that edge okay this is not going to be your sculpting tutorial, clearly. Um, <laughs> now it's just going, okay. Uh, what I would do in the end, close this up. And uh, then now this here is another surface body. And now I would go in and use um, other tools as you're already familiar with. We could mirror this over wherever the origin must be, create an origin out here, mirror that across, um, and then we could end up <laughs> with something that looks like that. All right, looks like that might be, uh, that might be the next, uh, the next live stream. We will, we will do something with, with this that is gonna be more, that's gonna be better than that. But that's okay. That is all we're gonna show today. I hope this was useful. Uh, give you a couple of, of options to uh, to import uh, the 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 outside formats in, how to work with them. That was what I I think that's probably the easiest option. Uh, then if we get into the sculpting, then we we will attack this at another point. But before I end, tomorrow's Toronto, so I will be out uh, for the next uh, for the rest of this week, and then also next week I'm going to Montreal and I'm going to. Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. All right, folks, that was all that I was planning on showing on this wonderful, what is it today? Wednesday, it's gotta be Wednesday. 188 is, is over, that was it. Thank you everybody for taking the time to watch this. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, thumbs down. And definitely uh, give, me, uh, give me those comments and uh, those emails. That's where we're gonna end today. Hope you have an awesome week and a half. And uh, until the next time, take care, folks.